broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here alone tonight. Um, I apologize. Uh, let, let me start. <laughs> well, let me start by saying Happy New Year, everyone, um, and then follow that up with the apology, which is, uh, I, I'm sorry that our um, our casts have been so inconsistent recently, um, particularly you know, I'd like to welcome the people that have come over here from the Tom Woods show. And um, I, we're not making a very good impression with our consistency here, but I promise it will get better. And then it'll probably get worse again for a while and then it'll get better. But um, we're we're trying to get back to some kind of semblance of a regular weekly schedule again as soon as we can. But things keep popping up and getting in the way. But it'll fix itself, or we'll fix it, or it'll get fixed anyway. Um, but since it's been a little bit, and uh, I was unable to get together with Liberty Larry um, because I'm once again in quarantine, um, which ends soon. So hopefully next week we'll be back to normal, and at least for a little while. But I did want to get some content out to you. And uh, there was, you know, I actually got up Monday to some kind of exciting news, and that's what I mostly want to talk about. And then, of course, um, I can't not talk about the Capitol Hill uh, riots, for lack of a better term. Actually, there's probably a better term, but it's the first term that comes to mind, because that's what the media has been telling me over and over again for two days. But let's start with Assange. Um, because it was kind of nice to start off the new year, or at least the first full week of the new year, with some um, fairly positive news. Um, have to be a little careful about it, but uh, there was, in fact, a ruling finally by the UK court on the extradition of Julian Assange to the US, and, um, and they ruled against the extradition. And so on the face of it, that seems like really good news. And, uh, and I, I'm certainly happy um, that, you know, Assange isn't going to be Im immediately extradited. Uh, but then when you start digging, it becomes less and less good news. Um, the, um, the judge in the case in the UK, um, uh, Judge Barrett, sir, Barrett, sir, I think is how you say it, accepted all of the arguments that the U.S. government made. Um, they, uh, she didn't agree that it was a political um, case. Uh, she didn't agree that Assange was just publishing material. She um, uh, agreed with the U.S. government that it that he is prosecutable, um, and. Um, the only reason, really, like, it, in fact, if you go through it, it seems like, okay, well, this was going to the inevitable end that that I predicted at least you know, months ago that he was going to be extradited. And then at the last moment, she pulled back and said that um, she wasn't going to extradite him. She was going to rule against the extradition because of the humanitarian argument that um, Julian Assange coming to the U.S. and being subject to, um, you know, um, a supermax prison and solitary confinement and various uh, SAMs, or which are special administrative uh, procedures, um, that include things like limiting phone calls and the people that you can contact and um, various other limitations to what what little freedom you have within a, a supermax prison to begin with. It's, it's essentially a bunch of additional um, punishments <laughs> that can be levied against prisoners within prison. Um, but because of Assange's uh, failing health after 10 years of isolation, essentially, um, including two years it, um, in the... Uh, the supermax prison, or what's essentially a supermax prison in the UK, um, his failing health and deteriorating mental state, that there was too high a chance that he would, uh, subjected to the terrors of the American prison system, um, would commit suicide. And so uh, she refused to extradite. 
Now, the U.S. Um, immediately said that they would appeal the decision. Um, and then there was a, you know, considering the reasons that the judge just gave for not extraditing him, um, that his mental health was under assault from uh, his time in prison. And, you know, you would think that the next step would be to release him from prison in the U.K., um, especially since the uh, the reason that he was originally placed in prison there for you know skipping bail ten years ago on a um, a charge from Sweden about sexual assault that was later well actually it was in, it was under investigation at the time and was later dropped um, and since he's already served his time for a jumping bail you would think that the next step would be to release him from prison in the UK. Uh, but that's not what happened. Um, they arranged a um, another hearing about bail uh, set for this just past Wednesday, the 6th. The 6th? Yeah, the 6th. And uh, bail was denied. So um, in the end, uh, Baritzer said that she wouldn't extradite him because of uh, the strain on his mental health of being um, imprisoned uh, while at the same time um, maintaining his time in prison in the UK. So, I'm not entirely sure how that makes sense, except that, um, or, you know, we get a little tinfoil hatty, um, tinfoily hat, anyway, and say that maybe she's, uh, she, maybe they're trying to kill him, or get him to kill himself, because that would be a lot easier if he killed himself, I suppose, than, um, if the government ended up locking him away forever. And uh, she certainly didn't help any kind of case uh, in terms of press freedom uh, with her ruling. But what she did was that she gave him this little bit of hope that he was going to be released, that he was going to get to, you know, to leave on his own, um, and then snatched her right away from him. And, of course, the, the U.S. will pursue this because he he committed the ultimate crime of exposing the crimes of the U.S. government. And, uh, and that can't be countenanced, right? Um, we can't allow that. And there's, you know, there's rumors going around that Trump's going to pardon him, you know, in his last couple of weeks in office here. And I, I mean, it would be fantastic. I would be thrilled if that happens, but I don't see it happening. I just don't expect it. Uh, he could have pardoned Assange, um, from the very beginning. Uh, and I, I think that he should have. I think that in his, you know, one of those first day promises, when I take office on the first day, I'm going to pardon Assange and Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden and all the other people who have blown the whistle on government mismanagement and criminality um, because... They're heroes, not villains. But that's not what happened, and I don't see it happening in this last couple of weeks of, of Trump's presidency either. I hope I'm wrong. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening. And if you think that when Biden takes over that, that he'll uh, release Assange or pardon him or drop the appeal or anything... I wouldn't count on that either. Um, I, I would say that he's more likely to pursue it than Trump, uh, but people will pay less attention because um, he's not Trump. And so that that's where we'll be on that. Um, and I, I guess I guess there's not much more to say much more to say on that. Um, except that this has been a huge mistake from beginning to end, that uh, Assange is nothing but a publisher, um, that the the charge that they're really trying to, to press home, that he's a hacker um, and that he helped Chelsea Manning access information that Chelsea Manning couldn't access on their own, uh, well, that's just made up anyway. Um, Chelsea Manning had access to the account and or, or to the information that was given um, under uh, their own account. And 
um, what Assange was trying to help Chelsea Manning with was to um, to hide uh, Chelsea's involvement um, by using another account to to um, disguise her own activity, uh, but only to access information that Chelsea already had access to, not to access information that Chelsea did not have access to. To me, it's not the same thing. And truthfully, even even if it was the same thing, I mean, I don't think that I would really hold it against either one of them for um, accessing information that they weren't supposed to access uh, if it resulted in um, clearly showing criminality or criminal activity on the part of the government. Uh, it seems to me that, that we would want that information to be released no matter where it came from. Um, at least if you, you know, you believe in this whole thing that we should know what the government is doing in our name. Remember it's a government of, by, and for the people, ideally. And, uh, so whatever criminal activity our government's involved in, they're doing it in our name and with our money. And I kind of feel like we should know about that no matter what. So I would encourage people to access information that they aren't supposed to access if it can show that the government is doing what they're not supposed to be doing. And now that's on the record, so we'll, we'll see how that comes back to bite me in the future. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short because I'm sitting here on the floor by myself and... Um, so I'm going to try and keep it short. But I did want to get some information out there, and um, and I, I suppose I'll move on to these these protests. Uh, and let me start with this. Um, so there was a rally uh, in D.C. Um, about the presumption that the election was stolen in favor of Joe Biden, um, that, you know, Trump had a rally and, and got people fired up and talked about walking down to the Capitol building to protest. Um, and then he disappeared and he kept saying in the speech that he was going to walk down there with him. And I think it might've been a better move if he had, but, um, people got fired up. They went down to the Capitol building. Um, and then things got out of control. <clears throat> Excuse me as they are likely to do when there's a whole bunch of people that are all riled up together. Uh, somebody does something stupid, everybody else follows. Um, the reaction to this has been so overblown, though, I, I don't even know where to begin. Um, I mean, Chuck Schumer <laughs> said that it would be a day that would live in infamy, um, which is the same words used to describe the Pearl Harbor attack. Uh, I, I heard... Uh, some other um, congressperson, I can't remember who now, uh, talk about that it was the it was like nine eleven. And okay, no, no, not not at all. Um, I don't even know how those comparisons can be made. Uh, that's beyond hyperbolic, and it did turn out deadly, though. Obviously, I mean. Um, this Ashley, uh, Ashley Babbitt, uh, was shot in the neck by uh, Capitol police is what they say. Um, the video is kind of horrifying. Um, she was trying to jump over a barricade. She had other security personnel literally crouched behind her, um, that weren't stopping her or really reacting to her in any way. But one of the, uh, one of the officers inside who was in a suit, by the way, not in, um, police attire, uh, stepped out, fired his pistol. Um, she died later in the, in the hospital. Now this is a 14 year, um, U S air force veteran. She was unarmed. Um, why aren't we having nationwide protests about this? Why aren't people out in the street about the, um, the murderous police? Um, I mean, is it, is it because she's white? Is it because she's a Trump supporter? Does that make it okay? I actually don't think that that's the issue. Um, I, I think that the issue is that she threatened the government. I mean, she wasn't much of a threat, but the, 
that would be the line I would say is that she threatened the government. And you might notice that, that, you know, while these black lives matter protests were going on all over the country, damaging private property, threatening private citizens, they were referred to as mostly peaceful protests. Um, whereas with these people in the, uh, in the Capitol, um, that were entering the Capitol, vandalizing to some degree, you know, desks, elected officials, desks and so forth and making them uncomfortable. Um, this is an insurrection. Now I would say if there was anything that was a mostly peaceful protest, it was probably these, um, I don't know if you saw the same video that I did, but when these guys broke into the Capitol, uh, they were walking through the, um, uh, the entryway and they were staying between the velvet ropes. They like, they weren't, I mean, they seemed bewildered that they were even there. It, it was like, it was like a, a tour that got off track. And I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that I've walked through there myself in that exact same way, except that I was lit in. And it, I mean, obviously it was, it was out of control and it was a terrible thing and it, and it shouldn't have happened. And I'm, I'm disappointed, um, that, you know, this violence ensued. I'm opposed to the destruction of property, uh, that doesn't belong to you, period. But uh, then on the other hand, the case could be made that public property belongs to all of us, right? Maybe they were destroying their own property. Um, and I, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with people protesting uh, what they see as an unfair election. Um, for anybody who hasn't, you really should read uh, Lysander Spooner's um, essay that's called The uh, Constitution of No Consent. Um, this idea that by virtue of being outvoted, we've consented to what happens next. Um, it's just, it's fallacious. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't vote for either of these guys. Like I was saying to one of, uh, one of my friends in the LP earlier today that I think that we should protest every inauguration. It doesn't matter who won or whether there's a question about whether they won or not. I think that we should protest every inauguration because I'm a certainly we didn't vote for whoever it is that won and we don't want to be su subject to their rule. And, you know, again, as Lysander Spooner said in no treason, um, if you, if you are obligated to submit to the rule of government that you did not consent to, you know, what's the difference between political slavery and shadow slavery? It's a matter of degree, not of kind. And, and in the Declaration of Independence, it says very clearly that um, whenever uh, the, the, the purposes of government that you see um, to protect life, liberty, property, the pursuit of happiness, uh, when you see that the government is destructive of these ends, it is, it, I'm pretty sure it says duty there. It is the duty of the people to alter or abolish it, um, replacing it with such forms as to them seems mo li most likely to, um, you know, affect their future security and liberty. Um, so I don't have a problem with the protests. Uh, I do have a problem with them getting out of hand. Um, when it's violent against people, I'm not sure that I can actually make a real strong argument about them destroying property there. Uh, since it's all public property, it doesn't really belong to anybody or it belongs to everybody, including the people that were destroying it. And I certainly think that you are welcome to destroy your own property if you so choose. So, um, what belongs to everyone belongs to no one. That's the, the, um, Um, so really in the end, I think what it comes down to though, uh, the reason this has been reacted to in such a strong way, um, is because, uh, <laughs> is because maybe for a moment there, um, the elites, the political elites, uh, felt threatened. Um, and frankly, I think that they should, I, I think that they should be afraid of the people. I think that that's what keeps us free and safe from our own government 
is that our government be afraid of us. And, uh, and I'm uh, on the whole, um, I would say, okay, with things that remind them that, that the people are the power. Yeah. I probably should have thought this through a little bit more before I sat down and started recording, but this is all kind of new and I'm, I'm, I'm more or less working my way through it as I go. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with the protests. Like just because you're wrong doesn't mean you can't protest. And they really believe that the election was stolen from them. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I don't think so really. Um, or at least no more than any other election. And that's something that I, that I also think is maybe positive about all of this is that, uh, that maybe people will question the results of these elections a little bit more. Maybe people will start to see that democracy may not be the legitimate answer. Um, because particularly when you look at something like this and you're like, Oh, you know, well, what happened was this whole group of people just became a mob and they went through and they decided to do what they please. And, you know, all democracy does really is formalize that, right? Uh, is to say that um, if you got a large enough group of people, you can all be wrong um, and you can be terrible to the minority. And that's okay because it's legitimate because it's democracy. And I, I think that democracy was supposed to be a way of maintaining liberty for all the people and it just hasn't really worked out that way um it's kind of a downer i hate to end there but i don't really have anything more to say <laughs> uh and i said that i would keep it short and um i'm like i, I keep shifting positions here and i'm like sitting on my foot and um and I'm not real comfortable because I didn't want to set everything up for just me. But uh, hopefully we'll have a new like podcast with the with Liberty Larry as well out in maybe in less than a week. Um, this is Friday. We usually record on Thursdays or Fridays. So uh, hopefully we'll get another one out to you real soon. And um, in the meantime... Uh, try and stay free, and we'll be back as soon as we can be when we finally get this right. Ciao.